Hello guys and welcome back to the second part of my packed tutorial for the support units. We're going to be continuing with the BRDM2 Strazalet 1M. This is the first of a few infrared missile units AA that the pack side can get. This starts off with a range of 2450 meters versus helicopters. 1820 meters versus airplanes with an accuracy of 9 and a HE power of 4. Now these units are very nice for their cost because not only are they infrared so they can't be targeted by seed missiles but their accuracy of 9 which is a 45% hit chance is good enough to take care of a lot of pesky helicopters. Also the HE power of 4 is good enough to two shot Apaches. On the NATO side, the only helicopters with 10 health are supply helicopters, so you don't have to worry about them as much. And therefore, having enough HE power to two shot an Apache is really all you need because they are the highest health attack helicopters that the NATO side has. Now, it does have a 100 km per hour speed off road, which is insanely good for chasing down helicopters. We've got a very good optics, which isn't as good because it doesn't have the radar but obviously that's only going to be for air units anyway. Then we've got the road speed of 150 km per hour because it's wheeled and its fuel capacity and autonomy is going to be looking after itself but with this AA unit it's only got four missiles so make sure that you keep it well supplied. Then we've got the 9K33 ROM. Now this comes with the 9M33 missile system. It's a radar missile system which has a range versus helicopters of 1750 meters, 2800 meters versus airplanes with an accuracy of 10, 50% hit chance, HE power of 5 which is good enough to take care of those pesky airplanes in two shots and we've got the suppression of 200 and rate of fire of 18 rounds per minute. So this fires off its missiles relatively quickly. So make sure then you keep it well supplied and if you do then it's going to be hitting a lot of targets and making a lot of NATO players very sad if they didn't bring along any seed missiles which can be used to take this out. Furthermore you've got another fast vehicle 80 kilometers per hour you've got the exceptional optics of the radar unit and the road speed of 150 kilometers per hour as well because it's a wheeled vehicle. Then we've got the fuel capacity of 500 liters and autonomy of 500 kilometers which is good enough to get anywhere it needs to be. You can also upgrade this particular unit to get more range, more HE power and more suppression. So you can see there's a slight upgrade, you get a nice dish on the back. And that basically increases its range up to 1,925 meters versus helicopters and 3,150 meters versus airplanes. Now that's a reasonably good distance and Although it doesn't match up to, for example, the books that we'll come to eventually, it's still a pretty long way for such a cheap unit. We're looking at 40 points for a relatively good AA unit. The optics and speed and so on all say the same. It's just the missile system that gets upgraded. Then we have the 9K33 OSA. This is a cheaper radar version of the ROMs. This has the 9M33 missile system, but what basically lacks in this one compared to the others is the missile change and the fact that they are a lot less accurate. You're losing three accuracy compared to the ROM or the OSA, and you're losing rate of fire as well. You can see it fires three rounds per minute less. Now it only has four missiles as well, so that's also an issue. But you've got to remember that although these things have 18 rounds per minute fire rates, they only have six missiles, or in the case of the original OSA, four. Now these are exactly the same as the ROMs. The ROM and the OSA AK are exactly the same for both sides. One's Polish and one's Russian. Now if we continue, we've got the BRDM2 Strela 1M. This is exactly the same as the BRDM2 Strazala 1M. It's just that the Strela system is called the Strazala system in Poland. Then we have the MTLB Strela 10M. 
This has an upgraded Strela missile system, which comes with 12 infrared missiles, a huge ammo upgrade from the original. And we've also got extra accuracy and extra HE power, extra suppression and extra fire rate. So you can see accuracy of 10, 50% hit chance compared to the accuracy of 9, 45%. Then we've got an extra HE power. This means that this can take care of airplanes as well. Although I wouldn't recommend using infrared missiles versus airplanes very often because they have such short range. So make sure you always have like a mix of radar and infrared. Then we've got the suppression. It's going to be decent enough to stun some aircraft. But what lacks with the MTLB is that it's a slower carrier, 60 kilometers per hour. It's tracked though, so it doesn't get stuck as much. We, because it's tracked, it's got the lesser road speed, but the fuel capacity and autonomy is still pretty decent. Then if we move on, we've got the 9K37 book. This is the first of the two probably most overpowered AA units in the game. I wouldn't say they're overpowered as such. They're not like unbalanced. They're just very powerful. So. We've got a range versus helicopters of 2,625 meters, which is a lot for a radar missile. Generally, infrared missiles have longer ranges versus helicopters, and the radar missiles have longer range versus airplanes. But in this case, the book actually has a very long range versus helicopters of 2,625 meters. Then we've got 4,200 meters versus airplanes, accuracy of 10, HE power of 8, suppression of 320, which pretty much one shot stuns any aircraft that gets hit. And that is very, very useful for keeping these things alive against seed missiles. Because as soon as a seed aircraft is hit by a missile that stuns it, it can't fire off the rest of its seed missiles before it generally runs out of fuel and has to fly away. Or people panic and they get rid of them very, very quickly. Also, it gives the book a chance to fire more than one missile, which will hit and deal tons of damage. The HE power of 8 is crazy. You're pretty much guaranteed to two shots anything or maybe even one shot a apache with that like that's actually ridiculous but you've got to remember some helicopters and planes actually have armor now i think so maybe not quite one shotting but close enough and then on top of that we've got exceptional optics versus airplanes and helicopters then we've got the speed of 50 kilometers per hour, which isn't great. Make sure it's well defended if you bring these in because they cost 70 points. You don't want to lose these to a random infantry unit, that's for sure. We've got a road speed of 110 kilometers per hour. That's because it's a tracked unit and the fuel capacity on autonomy will take care of itself. Now, again, you want to keep these guys resupplied only for missiles. We've got the Book M1, though. This has an increased accuracy and it's still not a prototype unit, which I was quite surprised about Include when they included all these prototypes. I thought the Book M1 would be a prototype, but it's actually not. You can use these on any one of your packed decks um, if they're an all-nations deck. Then we've got a range versus helicopters, 2,800 meters, so we get an extra 175 meters. Then range versus airplanes increases by another 200 or 350 meters which it goes to 4,550 meters, which is absolutely crazy. This will easily hit an aircraft with seed missiles before the seed missiles can hit it. And with an accuracy of 13, which is a huge 65% hit chance at max range, it's not gonna miss very often, which is very, very good for this unit. But it does cost a lot. It will get arted a lot. So make sure you keep it on the move and don't necessarily keep it in the same place all the time because it's very easy to target if you do that. So, yep, keep it safe and it'll do you wonders. Again, you've got the same hull, so the optics, speed, road speed, etc., all say the same as the original book. Then we've got the B21, BM21 Grad. This is a very cheap missile unit almost as cheap as the BM-24M. But the BM-21 Grad is one of those rocket units that you just spam for the sake of it. Like, if you want something to look pretty in Wargamer Land Battle, buy a lot of these and spam them all over the map. Now, I can't guarantee that they're gonna do a lot of damage. Generally, the spread of their missiles is too big to even care. Like, you can literally 
have your entire army underneath one of these and although they have a HG power of 8, their suppression value isn't high enough so they don't even scare anything unless they hit it directly which can happen occasionally and if you're lucky you will get some pot shots off here and there but it's not going to be too likely with this particular unit and I wouldn't dare rely on it at all but you can mess around with these I honestly don't use rocket artillery enough to tell you how they can be effective because I just never seen anyone using them effectively then we got the BM27 Urigan this is like the upgrade of the grad before you get to the smirch it's like the middle line we upgrade from 8 HE power to 12 HE power and we also get pretty much double the range at 35,000 meters Suppression of 2,053, so the suppression value is a lot higher, but you've got a rate of fire of 11 rounds per minute, and it actually comes with 16 rockets, whereas the Grad has 40 rockets. The 40 rockets, these guys spam like hell, and these ones are more targeted. They're more, like, the accuracy is not better because with rocket artillery units, there is no accuracy stat. It's basically the closer you are, the more accurate it is. And increasing the range just makes them less accurate. But with less rockets, it's going to generally hit a lot more effectively in a smaller area. Because they have a much higher HG power. Now, the Urigans and the Smirches, and the Smirch is the next one up, the BM-30, they were extremely effective in war game European escalation because they had a huge increase in accuracy compared to other artillery units and people used to use them to snipe with like artillery barrages of rocket artillery which I thought was perfectly fair it made them actually worth bringing on to the table whereas with these costing 120 points this has a range of 52,500 meters like one of the longest artillery ranges but it's just so inaccurate at that range that it's basically useless like it has a HG power of 16 it will pretty much blow up anything it touches if it hits a rocket on target but if it doesn't then you're wasting not only a ton of supply but they're pretty much useless suppression's pretty high you're gonna like I say if a rocket hits something it's gonna hurt but if it doesn't which it most likely won't at super long ranges then I don't know I'll probably do a video with these eventually, showing off how bad they are or how good they are. For all I know, they're amazing. I honestly can't say, this is just my opinion on based on stats and previous experience playing against and with them. So make up your own mind, feel free to check them out, but I'm just saying now, don't expect wonders from these things. We've got a 60 km per hour speed, they're going to get themselves around. The Urigan is actually a little bit faster with 65 km per hour speed and the Grad is even faster at 75 km per hour speed. So as you upgrade they get slower. But the road speed stays the same because they're all wheeled units. But the Smirch actually has a higher fuel capacity or a better fuel capacity and autonomy than the Urigan and the Grad is actually quite good on autonomy as well. So yeah, it's up to you if you bring these in. I honestly would not recommend them. now. We've got a couple of Polish versions here. We've got the Grad version, which is the BM-21 Polish unit. It's exactly the same as the BM-21 Grad on the Russians. But this BM-24M is even cheaper at 50 points. We've got an increased HE power, but less rounds to fire, less range, and but more suppression because the actual rounds are increased in caliber. You can see that they're actually pretty huge these rocket rounds and I would say this is actually a more effective unit than any of the others for rocket artillery and that's just because it's cheap and those rockets at close range when their accuracy is very very tight can cause havoc within infantry lines so feel free to mess around with them rocket artillery units I'm not a massive fan of at all Moving on, we've got the BTR-152E ZPTU-2. This is basically an armoured car with a twin autocannon on it, 
Range versus ground of 1,050 meters and a range versus helicopters of 1,400 meters. Accuracy of 2, HG power of 1, suppression of 102 and a rate of fire of 705 rounds per minute. We've got the size of medium, optics of very good which is basically for them to take care of helicopters. Speed of 55 kilometers per hour, road speed of 150 kilometers per hour because it's wheeled and a decent autonomy of 500 kilometers helped by the fuel capacity of 100 liters now these are decent units to provide a little bit of extra air cover against helicopters they can't attack airplanes they are an aa unit but they are mainly used just as little support units that can help your infantry push into towns or just take care of any pesky helicopters that are attacking your lines. Other than that, not a very good unit and not very well recommended. If we upgrade from that, we get the ZPTU-4 version, which is basically the same, just with a quad autocannon instead of a twin autocannon. And that obviously increases the rate of fire up to 1920. So it's not really worth bringing in for the cost the 15.1 but the 10.1 maybe depends really uh, I, I think there's a lot more better things you could be spending those points on so here we have the flat crack strella one this is a weaker strella system that i will then i've already covered you can see the ones we've already covered are the strazala 1m and the strella 1m this is actually just the strella one so it actually has less range and less accuracy and less HE power, less suppression than the 1M system, but it does cost 10 points less. Now, the good thing about this particular unit is that it keeps all of the same hull stats. So it's still got the 100 km per hour speed and the road speed and the autonomy and so on. So if you don't want to spend as much money but catch out weaker units, then these can be worth it. But I don't like the fact that you're going to have to be dealing with 3 HE power instead of 4 HE power. 3 HE power is really weak, 4 is moderate and good enough to, for Pact versus NATO, and then 5 is basically all you need to 2 shot. Whereas if you're playing NATO versus Pact, then you want to have at least 5 in most cases because the helicopters on Pact are a lot more powerful. But moving on, we've got the Flak Rack Strela 10M. This is the same as the 10M I've already covered on the Russians. Then we've got the Flak Rack OSA, same as the OSA system I've already covered for the Russians. And once again, we've got a Kub M, uh, one I've already covered for the Polish previously. Then we've got the Fla. MG SPW152E, exactly the same as the BTR152E. And then finally, we get a variant, the LO1800 Faster 4. This comes with the Strela 3 system. We've got the accuracy of 10, 50% hit chance, 4 HE power, which is decent enough to take out those pesky attack helicopters on the NATO side. Range versus helicopters though of 2,275 meters versus airplanes 1,820 meters, which is not really good enough. But what's really nice about this is it's high ammo capacity, it's cheap, and it's pretty effective. Like it can do a lot of damage. So if these are ignored, then they're gonna be taking out units and really, really annoying people. Now I believe this is one of the newer units actually, and it comes in very, very handy. So if you're playing an East German deck, make sure that you get these guys on them. We also have a fast speed of 70 km per hour, road speed of 150 km per hour because it's a wheeled unit, but the autonomy of 400 km is lacking, so make sure you've got the fuel. Obviously, it's going to have the supply with it anyway to reload those missiles. Now we've got the flat SFL 57.2. This has a quad auto cannon 57 millimeter auto cannon which is extremely effective against 
helicopters at quite long range. You can see it has 2,800 meter range versus helicopters, 2,275 meter range versus airplanes. Now, unfortunately, auto cannon AA units aren't that great against airplanes because they move so fast. And with the low accuracy of four, it's not, nothing special to be honest. But versus helicopters, these can catch them out very quickly and very easily. And they only cost 20 points. We've got very good optics to keep those helicopters spotted and we've got a speed of 50 kilometers per hour which isn't great but with the fuel capacity on autonomy they're going to be able to drive around and they do have quite a lot of rounds so generally you can keep these on your own away from your main forces if you have to. Then we've got the Flat SFL 23-4 which basically is very similar to the Shilka. I'm not sure if it's exactly the same. Let's have a quick peek. Okay the Shilka has more accuracy and more speed so basically what you're losing is 10 kilometers per hour speed and two accuracy for five less points but it is an east german unit so if you are making an east german deck then i guess it could come in handy as a replacement to the shilka so moving on to the gw sfl tunsha 120 millimeter this is basically an mtlb you can see the hull remains exactly the same as the russian version except from it's a prototype unit and it has a better mortar in it it's got 120 millimeter mortar range versus ground of 7700 meters has an accuracy of three which matches most other mortars he power of eight and a suppression value of 276, rate of fire of seven rounds per minute. Really good unit on the East German side to take out enemy infantry and suppress light vehicles, and also good for providing smoke support. Speed of 60 kilometers per hour, fuel capacity and autonomy is gonna look after itself. It's got plenty of rounds, 60 rounds of those 120 millimeter. So it's gonna be looking after itself just make sure that you don't get it too close to the front lines. Moving on, we have the Hibnyut ZU-23-2. Basically a truck with a twin auto cannon on the back. Cost 10 points, actually quite effective. Has a extremely good rate of fire, 400 rounds per minute. Range versus grounds, 1,050 meters. So it can be used as one of those nice little infantry push into town support units. We've got range versus helicopters of 1,925 meters and range versus airplanes of 1,400 meters, which is pretty nice because it's a quite a weak AA unit. It still has a range versus airplanes, which is reasonably good for slow airplanes if they're already on the map, which there often isn't. But we've got an accuracy of four, HE power of one, suppression of 53, and obviously that good rate of fire of 400 pounds per minute. Then we've got a fast speed, 90 kilometers per hour, going to be able to keep up with your forces very, very easily. And we've got a road speed of 150 kilometers per hour, fuel capacity and autonomy is going to be perfectly fine because it's just a normal truck and it's going to be able to look after itself. Now, what these I find are very nice for is either supporting a town or basically dotting them around the map to catch out helicopters in forests. So basically you spread them around and when, as soon as they get into that 1,925 meters range, they'll open up and they can cause a lot of damage. Now the accuracy is only 20% hit chance, but it's good enough, I reckon, to catch out some helicopters. And generally you're gonna be firing at pretty close range. Now you can upgrade this to the ZUR 2325, which comes with basically the same autocannon but it's a prototype unit for the Polish and you get a Strata 3 system strapped to the side of it. So you get the Strata 3, accuracy of 10, HE power of 4, which makes this a very, very potent unit for the Polish. And I actually think this is a really nice upgrade and definitely worth it if you're playing a pure Polish deck. Then we have the Ural ZU-23-2, basically the same unit as this, except from it's just got a Ural instead. And, but everything else, it pretty much stays the same. It's just the truck changes, although the stats remain all the same. Then we've got the M5359 Praga. This is another very nice 
Twin Auto Cannon AA unit. We've got 1050 meters versus ground, which is the same as all AA Auto Cannon units versus ground. We've got helicopters, 2100 meter range, airplanes, 1750 meter range. Accuracy of 6, HP power of 1, suppression of 69, and a rate of fire of 200 rounds per minute. Now, the rate of fire is lacking, but the accuracy of six is actually quite good for an auto cannon unit. And the thing is, like, what I really like about these cheap auto cannons units is that they are so cheap. And they can deal a great deal of damage versus ground targets and air units if the enemy isn't careful enough. Now, 70 km per hour speed is, is decent enough. We've got a fuel capacity and autonomy, which will be enough to get it around the map. We've got a good ammo capacity of 900 rounds which is going to keep it perfectly fine for a long time. And of course the road speed is 150 because it's wheeled. Now if we move on, we get the Strop 1, which is the predecessor to the infamous Strop 2, but I'll get there eventually. The Strop 1 has basically an improved cannon. It has a twin auto cannon again, as you can see but it has an increased range, increased accuracy, and the hull is different. So we got 2,450 meter range and an accuracy of eight. And basically that means that it's gonna be a lot more effective against those helicopters because it's gonna hit when it sees them. Now this is a actually quite a potent unit. If you catch out helicopters getting too close to the edge of forest and you send one of these out to take care of it, it can deal a lot of damage, and that's definitely something I would do. You use these to ambush air units more than you use them to directly confront them, because if you use them to confront them, generally the rocket pods from the helicopters will stun them because they're so weak. But the thing is with Drop 1, actually, that's something I need to mention, is that it does have two front armor and two side armor, which makes it a lot more resistant to nearby explosions than, for instance, the Praga, which only has one front, one side, and zero armor on the rear and zero armor on the top. But what happens when you go to the drop one from the Praga is that you get a drop in road speed and normal speed because it's tracked unit now, and the autonomy becomes a lot worse. It's only 200 kilometers. So this is gonna need refueling if you send it too far from its original position. Then we've got the infamous Strop two has a twin auto cannon 1680 rounds. We got an improved range versus helicopters of 2800 meters. We got an improved accuracy up to nine, but the rate of fire is lacking at 272. Not the Strop's strongest point. But the thing is with the Strop 2, it's extremely fast, 100 kilometers per hour, a road speed of 150 kilometers per hour, and a decent fuel capacity and autonomy to allow it to get that far. This it also hosts the Igla and it makes it an extremely potent AA unit. In Wargame European Escalation, these were used to really rush snipe any recon helicopters and they can still be used to do that because they have the Igla system, which has a range versus helicopters of 2,450 meters, which isn't a crazy amount because often the AGMs of helicopters are about 200 meters longer. But because it's so fast, it gets into that range before it even matters. And with an accuracy of 10, which is 50% hit chance, and a HE power of five, it's enough to get it in range to two shot those pesky recon helicopters away. And generally, NATO helicopters recon is actually quite weak. So you're probably not gonna necessarily need two shots depends on what kind of helicopter they're using. The rate of fire is fast enough though to really catch people out. Now we've got the BM-24. This is the East German variant of the ones I've looked at earlier, the Polish version of that. Then we've got the East German variant of the BM-21 and the RM-70. Now the RM-70 is actually a bit different it's a tiny upgrade from the BM-21, but not by too much. It basically gives itself a machine gun and has a little bit better rate of fire because the ammo capacity is increased. 
But to be honest, I'm not really sure if it's worth the mobility you get from the BM21 if you're going to go for that kind of rocket unit. And in all honesty, I would just ignore both of them anyway. <laughs> then we've got the OSA AK. Again, another unit I've already covered for the Russians. And we got the OSA AKM and another version of the Kub. An RM70 again matches the same as the East German variant. Then we got the SFL HB251. This is the same as the ones I've looked at earlier, the Gvodstika. You can see the stats remain exactly the same. And then we've got another version of the Akatsia. And finally, we have a variant, the Czech SHM120 Pram S. This is a pretty well-armored mortar carrier, 7,700 meters, accuracy of three, HE power of eight, suppression of 276, and a rate of fire of 11 rounds per minute. It's just basically a really nice mortar unit for the checks to have has a decent machine gun on it which actually has a quite a good range of 1050 meters it has that upgraded machine gun that the checks can get in terms of range but i don't i'm not a super fan of this mortar unit because it's not very fast 50 kilometers per hour it does have two front armor however one side armor one rear armor and the fuel capacity and autonomy is enough to move it around a little bit then we got the ZSU-57-2, same as the flat SFL I've already looked at. And then we've got the, uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, another ZSU, which is the same as the flat SFL-23-4. But again, just a Polish variant. And again, to finish off, more variants, the Czech Strela 1M and the check Strela 10M systems. And that's pretty much it for the pack support units. So hopefully this has been useful. I know it's been a lot of me saying, oh, this is another variant of this particular system. And I probably didn't have to go through all of them like that. But it basically, it, all it is, is just that the fact that they've added multiple versions of the same unit to allow people who make their own decks of specific nations to be able to have the same kind of support units that the rest of the nation decks have. And that's why they've done it. That's why there's so many duplicates on the pack side. Whereas on the NATO side, there's a quite a lot more unique units. But there we go. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Hopefully you've learned something. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.